all the working parts of your toilet are under this lid here. You can just take this and set it aside. And inside is a valve mechanism and the handle here that is attached to the flap. And in this particular toilet, the valve mechanism looks like this here. So this is what the inside of your toilet looks like. All the business pieces are inside. Here's the valve. This is that handle and the flapper is down there. This is what the valve mechanism itself looks like and it sits in the tank like this. This here is connected underneath the tank and we're gonna show how to replace this. All of this part here is what you see here inside the tank and what happens is when you flush the toilet, this float here drops when the water drops and when it drops it allows this arm here to go down and when this arm goes down the valve opens to refill the tank with water and as the water rises it floats this back up and it causes that lever here to shut the valve off. Sometimes what happens is that it doesn't rise up far enough to shut off the water and you can fix that. You see this little metal piece right here. If you squeeze this with your fingers, you can then adjust this rod here and it will control how high this arm will go to shut that off. If you hear something like this, if you can hear that water running, that's what uh, is happening when the valve doesn't shut off and you would see the water trickling down the bowl. And when the water gets too high, this is the overflow pipe where the water goes down and you sometimes hear the water going down through that pipe. Sometimes you can't fix the valve. In fact, this valve came out of my house and even when you pull the cap off, what you'll find is you can't get access to the working part in there. I think what happens is sometimes grit gets in there and obstructs the valve and no matter how hard you try with this lever, you can't shut it off, which means you need to replace this. And I want you to know that the valve we're going to replace cost less than what I was wasting in water on a monthly basis. So step number one is you want to reach down here and shut off the supply. That's this valve right here. You turn it to the right, uh, righty tighty lefty loosey is what you remember. You want to turn the water off, make it tight like this, turn it off, and then you want to empty the tank of water. Because the water's off, the valve will not refill the tank and then we'll be able to replace the valve. After you've emptied the tank, what you'll see is there'll be some water left down there because even with the flapper up, there's the flange down here and there's about this much water left in the bottom of the tank. So when we go to do the next step, you're gonna to wanna to put a bucket underneath here to catch this water that will flow out of the bottom of the tank. There's a supply line under here that connects to this piece right here. Uh, I'm going to show you in just a moment that we're going to twist this off to release the supply and then we're going to lift the valve out. And so it's just as easy as reaching under here. You can see this black ring and I'm going to loosen that. That will disconnect this supply line here and then it will allow us. Now you see there's some water that spilled out there then I can simply take the valve out. To do this next step, you may need a pair of pliers. This is called a slip lock and it gets bigger or smaller. You might use an adjustable wrench that's bigger than this one here. The point is I'm going to unscrew a nut that is here at the bottom of that valve and then once I have that completely taken off, I'll be able to lift the valve out of the toilet this just take a second twist 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 and what you'll see is that when I've got it loose and I lift that up the water comes pouring out of there so that's why you want to have your bucket underneath here There it is. That's the old valve. 
And all we're going to do is replace that. In your toilet, you may have a really old valve type like this. This is a ball float. And what happens is when the water rises, this ball raises up and it shuts the valve off there. You can adjust the valve with that screw, but sometimes you can't get this to shut. Point is that the bottom of this is exactly the same as those other two. And I have a third kind of valve here. This is the newest kind that is on the market. Again, it goes in the bottom of the tank just the way that other one came out. The difference is that the float is inside this box. There's not this separate uh, ball that floats up or that piece that I showed you before. It just, the water fills and the float is inside this box there. Uh, I like this uh, device a lot and this is what I put in my toilet uh, recently. It saved me about $20 a month cost me about $10 for the replacement valve. So I'm just gonna show you how to replace this valve. First, there's an adjustment here for the height of the valve, and you see these ridges allow you to make it taller or shorter. This simply goes back in the hole, and this pipe goes down into the discharge, and then this is the ring that came off the bottom, and it just goes screws back onto the bottom of that valve the way we took it off. I'm gonna tighten this by hand and then give it one or two uh, turns with the pliers. You wanna be really careful with these pieces because they're made out of plastic and you don't wanna tighten them so much that you break them. You may have noticed my holding this as I tightened that, so, but I didn't want this to twist in the tank and uh, obstruct that overflow pipe there. And then, here's the secret of a good plumber. When I replace this on my toilet at home and I reattached the supply line here, it kept dripping. And then I remembered the thing to do is, this is called Teflon tape. It's real thin, and if you just take a piece of this and wrap it around the threads down here where you're gonna make your connection. Just a couple twists around here will literally make all the difference in the world. It will not leak if you use the Teflon tape. So I'm just gonna take a couple twists around here and then I'm gonna reinstall the supply and reconnect it. So there and with my hands, I'm just going to tighten it up like so. And hopefully when we turn the water back on at the valve, we'll have no leak. Again, I'm just tightening this by hand because I don't want to crack any of the plastic. Here's the moment of truth. And I don't feel any water floating out from underneath here. So we got a good connection, bottom of the valve to the bottom of the tank, and then the supply that connected to the bottom of the valve itself.